Plenty of starters are going to be out of the first preseason game for the Buccaneers. We name which starters need to play. We take a look at what we want to see out of Kyle Trask in the first preseason game, and we answer a call from one of our listeners. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, joined by my wonderful co-host, Mr. David Harrison. You can check out all of his written work over at Sports Illustrated's BucksGameDay.com. Check out mine over at SB Nation's BucksNation.com. And, of course, you can follow along on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JayYarko underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Thanks again for making the Locked On Bucks your first listen or your first view of the day. Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach, uh, recently said that not many, if any, of these starters are going to play against the Miami Dolphins in week one of the NFL preseason. That's something, James, that we have uh, been anticipating, something we've talked about during the offseason. But now we have some some verification, uh, some actual quotes to go over here. So Todd Bowles saying, quote, there will be a lot of starters that won't play in that game. They'll get plenty of work in practice, though. The two practices we'll get to uh, will play similar to a game for those guys. We want to see some of the younger guys play that I've mentioned and try to build our depth a little bit and go from there. End quote. Now, he also did say specifically that Tom Brady will not be playing against or for the Miami Dolphins. But so um, he said, but he said uh, a lot of the starters won't play. But that doesn't mean all the starters aren't going to play, James, which means some of the starters, of course, will play. So uh, we thought we would we would take this segment of today's episode, our final episode of the week here before we uh, officially turn the calendar. The Bucks will be on the field Saturday and Sunday practicing. Um, and of course, Friday, as you're, you're watching this, uh, we'll be hard at work getting ready for the season. But uh, the next time we talk on this screen and in the ears of our listeners will be Dolphins week officially. So the three starters that we believe have to play and why, James, uh, we compiled this list together, but you are going to bring us into the first name on that list. Yeah, uh, you asked me who I felt needed to definitely play from the list of starters. And to me, there was n- there's a 101 in this which starter should play fantasy draft, and that is Robert Hainsey. Okay. Hands down, no question, it needs to be Robert Hainsey. Why? Well, because you're still trying to figure out what you need to do at center, right? You are trying to figure out if Robert Hainsey is going to be the guy to replace Ryan Jensen for however long Jensen is out. Is Hainsey going to be able to do the job? Do they need to look to Nick Leverett? Do they need to look to the free agent pool and bring in a veteran that can come in and and you know compete for that starting position? You have to know what you have. The center position is way too important to this offensive line, way too important to the success of the Buccaneers, and way too important to the protection of Tom Brady to not have Robert Hainsey get preseason snaps you don't want his first preseason action to be the second preseason game or you know limited snaps in the third preseason game and basically have you know maybe 20 snaps heading into the regular season that is a disaster waiting to happen we have to see snaps out of Hainsey yeah, what's what's interesting though too is I mean there, this really is kind of a perfect situation. I don't you know as as perfect as you can make it in the National Football League. Things are always kind of changing. We know the Miami Dolphins uh, they've got a new coaching staff in there. Mike McDaniel, perhaps you know one of my favorite head coaches in the league uh, that that we don't cover directly um, is in there. Defense coordinator Josh Boyer is is going to put his own name and his own wrinkle on this defense under the vision of Coach McDaniel. But by and large, this defense is is very similar to what. Uh, was on the field last year. So if they're studying and preparing and they're actually going through kind of game plan type situations and preparing, I don't, you know, obviously they're not going to go full, full, fully into it because you're not going to see a unit, but you know, Emmanuel Agba, Raekwon Davis, Christian Wilkins, a lot of these, like these are guys that you have some abilities to kind of study and kind of look at some tendencies on. So if you're Robert Hainsey, it, it, it kind of gives you a leg up because not only 
are you trying to prepare as a starter for the first time? I know everybody always says you prepare for starting as your starter anyway, but let's be real. Now you're actually preparing to be a starter, but you also have some tendencies you can actually go out there and study and respond to and go out there and kind of test your own mental acuity uh, against some of these opponents. So it's very good for, for Robert again, no matter who the center or who is under center, whether it be Blaine at first, whether it be Kyle, we'll get into that conversation here in a little bit. Absolutely important that Robert Hainsey, he is the Christian McCaffrey of this draft when he's healthy, when Christian is healthy, not Robert. Um, with the second pick, I don't know, I'll go with that theme. With the second pick sure, in our uh, starters week one fantasy, I've already taken this further than it should have gone. Uh, Logan Ryan is, is going to be the next one. And some people out there might be saying, but David, he's not a starter. And I will say to you, maybe he's not but maybe he is and then again going back to that replacing jordan whitehead role i honestly do i think as of right now and this is kind of why we're operating this way mike edwards logan ryan keanu neal really just kind of depends on who you're playing against and really it just kind of depends on you know the situation i mean they're not going to necessarily the opponent isn't necessarily going to receive the kickoff to open every single game so maybe it's it's a punt deep inside you know maybe you pin them inside the five after your first drive um and they come out in a heavy set. So Keanu Neal comes down in the box and he's your starter in that quote unquote safety position. Or maybe it's a 35 yard line or maybe it's a kickoff from a touchdown, hopefully, uh, that was scored on the first drive and, and you come out in a pass set. You know what I mean? So Logan Ryan, Keanu Neal, Mike Edwards, they kind of all would have qualified for this conversation as far as I'm concerned, which is why he's on the list. But again, a new guy learning the system. And again, you go to the opponent, Tyreek Hill. I mean, we don't know right now. The Miami Dolphins might follow suit, and Tyreek may not even get on the field all that much. But if he is on the field, uh, it's great. 31-9, to nine, what happened? Throwing the deuces up from Antoine Winfield. But we also know what happened to Tyreek Hill, or with Tyreek Hill the last time that the Bucs saw him before that Super Bowl, and that was not pretty. We need Logan Ryan to be ready to face these kinds of guys. Jalen Waddell uh, potentially out there as well. Trent Sherfield, a guy that not a lot of people know about, but believe me, that guy's got wheels if he's out there on the field. So whoever it is, Logan Ryan gets get some some live competition in there. Read a guy that you haven't been practicing against that you're not you're not buddies with in the locker room, uh, and show us kind of how you're grasping Todd Bowles' defensive schemes early on. Yeah, I I agree with you 100. percent It's it's really going to be interesting to see how the safeties are utilized. And you're 100 percent right. There are there are going to be some times when Logan Ryan is the starter. There are going to be some times when Keanu Neal's the starter. There's going to be some times when Edwards is the starter. Those three are kind of interchangeable at the moment, but we need to see how he's adapting on the back end of that defense, how well he's working. Obviously, I don't think Antoine Winfield Jr. will be playing in the Miami game, but kind of how well he's working on that back end. And the last name is another new face to the team, and it's Russell Gage. And, and I'm not going to sit here and pound the table that Russell Gage should get extended action. I, I think Robert Hainsey should play at the bare minimum the first quarter. Uh, Russell Gage, maybe, maybe the full first drive. But he needs to get out there, be acclimated. Let's make sure that when you know he's he's understanding the playbook, he's understanding the verbiage, there's no miscommunications. If you run the wrong route and it leads to an interception in a preseason game, Okay, no big deal. You go back, you pull out your little Microsoft tablet, you check it out, and they say, look, you were supposed to do this when you were supposed to do this. You know, where where was the mix-up? And he can explain, maybe it's something he didn't grasp. Maybe it's something he thought he knew. Turns out that he didn't. Those situations happen. Let's get those kinks worked out in the preseason game rather than having that happen in week one against Dallas mm -hmm. and it turning into a pick six. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, you can go out there and you can kind of tell Russell Gage we're not so much worried about you know the chemistry between you and Tom in this in this specific situation. Uh, it's more about are you in the right place? Are you running the right route? Are you reading you know some of these option routes and, and these zone sets? Are you reading things the way that we want you to read them to fit our offense? So it's a great opportunity to see the mental acuity and the processing of these players. There's another player we're going to be watching the mental processing though or of a lot, and that is quarterback Kyle Trask, who we expect to see plenty of in Week One, but just how much? How early and what do we want to see out of him? We'll talk about that here in a minute. But before we talk about that, James, we got to level with each other. You, me, our audience, we've all been in a situation at some point in time in our lives when we're a little tight on cash. If, if, you're, if you're me, it's it's the ramen noodle for dinner nights. You know what I mean? Look, sometimes you got to do it. Sometimes you, I mean, honestly, I still kind of do it sometimes. It's, ramen's really good. 
But maybe at that point in time, I could only afford, you can only afford, our audience could only afford a few gallons of gas in the tank or that ramen dinner until the next paycheck hits uh, or what you're, whatever you're looking for. If you're in that situation right now, that's where our friend that Dave can help because if you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when an unexpected expense comes up. Now, Dave can help you get out of that pinch when you really need it. What if you could ask for a little bit of help from future you? Maybe you'd ask future you for a little bit of extra cash. Well, now you can do that with the help of Dave. Dave is a banking app that will help you get up to $500 instantly with their extra cash program. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift if that came up, or catch up on whatever bills you need to catch up on. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any more hangups, and there's no interest and no credit check needed. So if you're in a pinch and you need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from you. Just go to your app store, download the Dave app, that's D-A-V-E, sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. Future you will thank you. Thanks again for making the Locked On Bucks podcast. First listen or your first view every single day. Kyle Trask, James, is a quarterback on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster uh, Mm -hmm. as early as... What's that? I said I can confirm. Yes. As early as like the second week of February, if my memory serves... There was about 35% of Buccaneers fans that wanted to see Kyle Trask be the starter. There was about 35% who wanted the team to trade for somebody, Deshaun Watson, uh, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers. And then there was about 35%, I don't care if the math works, that believed that Tom Brady was going to come back. And James, you were not part of that 35%. Anyway, Kyle Trask getting some early love on social media, fans in attendance, and most importantly, I think anyway, from head coach, Todd Bowles, Coach Bowles, quote, saying recently, quote, he's getting more comfortable in the offense. He's confident in where he's going. He's understanding things. We're putting him in a lot of situations where he's getting some experience, end quote, but he wasn't done. Came back in the same press conference later on, asked another question, said again, quote, he's a confident guy. He knows where to go with the football. He commands the offense when he's in there. So I'm pleased with that, end quote. James, with starters like Tom Brady not playing in week one against Miami Dolphins, how much do you want to see Kyle Trask on the field? And when do you expect to see him get his first live snaps of the preseason? What I want to see out of Kyle Trask, obviously Brady's not playing. You know who else doesn't need to play? Blaine Gabbard. You know what he is. You know what he offers. You know what he brings to the team. I want three quarters of Kyle Trask. You can leave the fourth quarter to Griffin. That's fine. First three quarters need to be Kyle Trask, because when it comes time for the regular season, barring some unbelievable derailment caused by bad luck and just the football gods smiting us all, Hmm. Kyle Trask won't even suit up. He will not be active for a single game all year. We need three quarters of Kyle Trask against the Dolphins. We need three quarters of Kyle Trask against the Titans, and we need half of a game out of Kyle Trask against the Colts, assuming that the starters play into the second quarter, probably the first half, as they tend to do in those uh, dress rehearsal games. I, I don't care if Blaine Gabbard doesn't take a snap. I don't care if Ryan Griffin doesn't take a snap. I need as much Trask as humanly possible. Figure out as much as you can with as vanilla and generic as the preseason is, figure out what you have. The only way to do that is with game situations against a legitimate opponent. All the trash in preseason. All of it. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I think that would be great. I also don't think it's going to happen. I think Blaine Gabbert leads the team out. Uh, to start the game, I think Kyle Trask comes in probably series three, right? It kind of depends. I think if Blaine Gabbard and and we'll call them the ones, right? If they go down the field, score a touchdown, maybe see him come out for another possession, go down the field, score a touchdown, then I think you you definitely see him. But I mean, if they come out there and just, just kick butt all over whoever the Dolphins put out there, because again, a lot of their starters probably aren't going to play either. But if they come down there and just drive down the field and this is just too easy, all right, let's put Kyle in there right away. But 
I like your idea. I like what you're saying. And I, and I, I would hope that's what the Buccaneers do. I just think, I do think Blaine Gabbard is going to get the start. I do think he's going to get the first reps on the field. So I think the earliest we see Kyle Trask is drive two. If drive one goes basically perfect drive three, I think at the latest is when Kyle comes in. And I think maybe one drive into the fourth quarter after that, you probably see Ryan Griffin to finish the game, but kind of picking up on where you left off. I'm going to kind of take what you said and put a little bit of an extra wrinkle in there. And this is just my crazy, crazy mind at work here. I do. I want to see Kyle Trask come in. I want you to prep as the starter all week. I want you to study. I want you to lead the meetings as, as Tom would lead the meetings. And then I want you to lead this team on the field. I want number two to be the first guy out the tunnel, all this. So, you know what? Run down to the end of the field and give an LFG. Like just do, just do it all. Just do your best TB 12. And then I want you to go out there and I want you to play the entire first quarter. Whatever, you know, whatever series we're on at the end of the first quarter, you're going to finish that series. After that, I'm going to pull him. I'm going to pull him. I'm going to put probably Blaine in there to get some reps because he does. I think I do think he needs some reps. But what I'm going to do in that meantime, James, is I'm going to sit down with my coordinator, my coach, my quarterback coach, whoever I, whoever I trust to do it. And we're going to hit that tablet like you were talking about. We're going to go over some things. Then I'm going to put you in as close as possible. Hopefully the, the stars align. If we can get a two-minute drive, I'm putting you back in and the first half. You're bringing us out of halftime, and let's see how you made those adjustments. So I get a little bit of coaching time on the sideline in the first half. I get halftime. You come in the locker room. You, you bring us back out the locker room. You lead a couple of drives. Let's see how those adjustments get made. Then let's put Ryan Griffin in there for the rest of the game. That's my dream scenario, uh, if I could say it, for – Kyle Trask in week one, how the, how the Buccaneers actually go about doing it. We'll see. I absolutely love that idea. And for the record, I do think that your assessment of how the game will actually go is probably closer to reality. I do think we are going to get blamed for one, maybe two series. Um, and then Kyle Trask will get the bulk of the work, probably looking at Ryan Griffin coming in midway, to late in the third quarter, uh, I, would, I would venture to guess. But, David, what do you want? What do you need to see out of Kyle Trask to be able to tell yourself, you know, there's there's starter potential here? Um, I need to see the throws being made. And, and and I say being made, not being completed. And, 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 and I know a lot of people are going to like hearing that, and they're not going to, you know, if Kyle finishes with like a three for 11 line for 36 yards and an interception, a lot of people are going to say, this is why Kyle Trask can't be the starter. But again, you have to understand who we're talking about. We're talking about a young quarterback that has not faced many live bullets at all. He hasn't faced live bullets in a very long time, period. And you're talking more about the the processing. We we're talking about in segment one with some of these guys, the mental acuity and the processing, understanding what's happening on the field and where to go with the ball. If that interception is a tip drill interception or it hits a guy in the shoulder pad and pops up and goes, I'm okay with that. Now, if it's just a cla- just a terrible read, and you don't, you know, and, and honestly, you might even have to wait for the press conference. You don't see the wide receiver kind of tap his chest and immediately say, bro, that's my fault. I was supposed to cut in. I cut out, you know, type of thing. Um, then that could be a little bit concerning. But you just want to see the smart reads being made and completions are great. You obviously want them, right? But I think that if I can see those out, those outbreaking routes, those passes to the outside sideline go on a rope and they get there on time and they get there accurate, they're not late. Or if I can see that right quarter field deep pass, and you see the ball land in the area that you would want it to land, you start to get that warm and fuzzy. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but you just want to see that he can make all the plays, that he can make the reads, he's reading correctly and in a timely fashion. All right. Well, we are going to hit the voicemail line coming up in just a moment, David. But first, BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, the NFL, the NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Wrap things up here on the Locked On Bucks podcast. David, we have a voicemail from a loyal listener, a loyal caller, and a great friend of ours, 
one Mr. Kevin in Orlando. Hey, James. This is Kevin from Orlando calling. I've been uh, reading a lot of articles about the Bucks and watching some videos about the Bucks late, lately getting all hyped up for uh, this season. There were a few things I wanted to um, wanted to call and, and talk about. Um, you know, a lot of analysts are very concerned about the injury to our, our starting center, and I was wondering if you guys had any thoughts about some free agents out there that could possibly uh, replace them, especially because the Bucks are in win now mode and probably. Um, pro- um, and I'm a little nervous about them doing some um, experiments at center here. Um, like some free agents, like um, I'm going to – hopefully I don't um, butcher this name, you know, Matt Paradis for one, as well as uh, J.C. Uh, Treader. I'm not sure if uh, those have uh, come um, across your attention or not about possible free agents that, that could um, fill in um, at uh, center, especially um, with uh, J.C. Treader, who's had um, some experience in the playoffs as well. So – somebody who can probably be able to slot in there and you know, as an experienced center. Um, another thing I came across, too, I thought was pretty interesting was what um, um, LaDainian Tomlinson said on the NFL Network, how he is now predicting the Bucks aren't even going to make the playoffs at all. Of course, interestingly enough, the rest of his um, – the rest of his co-hosts were all over him about that prediction. So I'm kind of wondering if his prediction might have been just against the grain, against everybody else, just because of the fact he wanted to be different, or if he actually really does believe that the injuries on the offensive uh, line and the fact we have some new offensive um, um, new people starting on some on uh, on a, on offensive line in different positions than they usually start is enough for him to think that the uh, Buccaneers actually are not going to make the playoffs. I just want to know what you thought about that as well. All right. I look forward to your next episode. All right, Kevin, thank you very much for the call. And and look, I think right now all options are on the table. I, I really do. And I think a lot is going to come from how they feel Robert Hainsey does during Dolphins week. That's going to be a big benchmark. It's going to be a big test how he's going against a, a different team, live action, whether it's it's in practice, whether it's in uh, in the preseason game. And, and of course, neither team's going to be able to touch the quarterback, but they will be able to distinguish if there's going to be a sack or not. And, and you're really going to get a feel for how Hainsey is, is filling in this role. So I think J.C. Treader is absolutely on the table. He's probably the most likely of the free agent centers. Uh, and then, David, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce the name either. Is it is it Paradis or Paradise? or? Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Paradis. But, Parad- I mean, I, uh, again, you know, we've, we've never covered him directly. And, you know, right. a, a big apology to him if we are just completely butchering that. But I want to say I remember uh, when when people were covering that it was it was Paradis. But, you know. I, I, I honestly, honestly, I don't think I, I don't think a veteran free agent is the answer because as much as 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 hard as it is for a quarterback to come in and, and learn a new playbook and a new scheme and all that stuff, the center is, is a very important part of that as well. And you know, older isn't always better. And you know, JC Treader doesn't have this 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 playbook. Paradise doesn't have this playbook. Um, they don't have all the calls and the checks. And, and, you know, I know Tom makes a lot of calls and checks on his own too. Uh, but, you know, Ryan also makes some of those. And, and Tom's a guy who wants to be able to trust, you know, his center. And and even though Robert and Nick haven't been starting and all that, they've been studying and they've been in this system. They've been with this team. They know what is coming. Honestly, James, obviously this puts a lot of pressure on, on Robert Hainsey, right? This puts a lot of pressure on Nick Leverett if, and when he gets his opportunity. But I think it's, I think it's, it's Hainsey's job to lose at this point. I really feel like it is yeah. Hainsey's job to lose. Um, now if Hainsey falters like really bad and, and it just is not looking good. Um, and I think they'll make that decision kind of throughout the process of the joint practices, honestly, more than anything. And I think you'll, that you'll see a lot of Blaine Gabbard in there and pass rush or, or blitz, you know, uh, blitz periods. I think you're going to see a lot of Blaine Gabbard standing back there or a coach even like they may not even put Tom back there and run the risk of, you know, uh, of a, of a Dolphins pass or of, of, of uh, Jalen Phillips coming through and saying, you should have drafted me instead or something, you know, like um, I, I just don't see it happening. But uh, I think honestly what this, what this does really puts a lot more pressure on the running backs. On Leonard, you know, Rashad White's got to go out there and prove that he's that three down bat. I mean, Geo, like this, this could lead to you not seeing as much Geo as maybe you would have with Ryan Jensen out there because if they got to rely on a guy, I mean, 
Giovanni Bernard, you know, he's still a football player. Got it. But I don't know if he's going to MJD any junior say house anytime soon. Maybe rest in peace. Um, you know, I think honestly, this puts a lot more pressure on the running backs because they're going to be expected to read blitz pickups from the inside out, knowing that that's where kind of the weakness is and that's where teams are going to want to come in. And not only that, but you got to get there. You got to and you got to get in front of your quarterback and don't you trip the goat like don't you don't you sweep in front of Tom Brady and trip him up, buddy, or you right. will find yourself on the bench and Keyshawn Vaughn. Look. He hasn't had a lot of opportunities, but we've seen some issues in pass pro. And, and I'm not saying that Rashad White is perfect or either neither is Lenny. But I think, honestly, if you're a running back right now, you got to be doing extra work on pass protection, blitz pickups, because I think this puts as much pressure on that group as it does on Robert Haynes. Yeah, and it is. I, I think you might be right. I think they might you know, roll with what they already have because it is a complicated offense to try to pick up. Uh, there is a lot that goes into being the center. And maybe they just bring him in for for some depth, but I, I do think this is probably Robert Hainsey's job to lose. As far as what MJD said on NFL Network, look, we all remember the uh, the genius that was Steve Smith after the Buccaneers absolutely trounced the Detroit Lions to the point that all of the starters didn't even play in the second half, minus Gronk, who got an early yeah. touchdown pass from Blaine Gabbard. When Steve Smith comes on the NFL Network and he goes, this team gets to the playoffs, they're going to get ran. Yeah, well, he looked like a freaking idiot. So MJD, oh. come January, is going to look like a freaking idiot. Uh, did he say yeah. MJD or did he, I thought he said LaDainian Tomlinson. Was it Tomlinson? I thought it was MJD that said it. I can't remember anymore, to be honest with you. But listen, anyway, uh, you know, they're going to look like an idiot. Yeah, but this kind of goes back to a previous conversation we had with, with about Chris Sims. Like, just just because guys played the game doesn't mean they're they're. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it at that. With that, we are going to get out of here. We want to thank all of you for making the Locked On Bucks podcast your first listen or view of the day. Now make your second listen to Locked On NFL podcast. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league. We will be back on Monday. When it's officially Dolphins week, we'll have real football to talk about. We will have a game to preview. We will have all kinds of fun. My dog is just, she is next level driving me nuts right now. I apologize. (laughs) If you have questions or topics that you want to send in for us to answer or for us to play, your thoughts, questions, ideas, observations, anything at all. You can give us a call at 813-444-5841, just like Kevin from Orlando did. Or if you're not the voicemail-leaving type, you can send us an email to LockedOnBucksPodcast at gmail.com, and you can make David read that live on the air uh, and make sure to put in lots of difficult words so that he gets tripped up and I get to laugh. Check out David's written work over at BucksGameDay.com. You can check out mine over at BucksNation.com. And, of course, follow along on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JayArco underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire those cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at LockedOnBucks.